Speaking of ancient history, it has already been shown that the temperature in northeast China was between 7 and 9 degrees warmer than present during the early Holocene, which is over 7,000 years ago, when carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere drifted at around 260 parts per million. There are over 400 parts per million now. Despite that, now the latest evidence from two new studies also indicates that northeast China was between 2 and 3 degrees warmer during the mid-1800s than it is today, suggesting this region has cooled by 2 to 3 degrees over the last 170 years of global warming. Hmm. Not that the Chinese are remotely concerned. As the Chinese communists embark on building around 1,000 new coal-fired power stations so they can build lots of steel, I wonder what for, but never fear, if there's one thing the Chinese communists believe in, it's absolute control over all aspects of life, including, apparently, the weather. Yes, apparently China is developing a high-tech satellite-based weather control system called River in the Sky that will allow it to move water vapour through man-made corridors in the sky. This is in addition to their cloud seeding programs that involve shooting missiles filled with salt and minerals into the sky based on an original idea by Kate Bush. Of course, one way of gauging whether the climate is changing or not is by how soon or how late in any given calendar year a particular temperature first occurs. An example, earlier this week, Ottawa recorded its first 5 degrees Celsius of the year, meaning winter is receding. But the first 5 degrees Celsius of the year is normally around January the 13th, seven weeks ago. And the earliest 5 degrees Celsius recorded in Ottawa was January the 1st in both 1876 and 2012, meaning those winters were much shorter way back then. By this measure, this year has been one of Ottawa's longest and coldest winters. Similarly, Tony Heller tweeted this week from Colorado, we had nearly a foot of snow on June 8 and September 8 last year, expecting another three feet this week. Global warming is making our winters nine months long. Meanwhile, Climate Change Dispatch reports that the sea ice extent in the Antarctic on December 2020 and January 2021 can be described as normal. Don't tell Unilever, normal's a naughty word these days. And finally, the cracks in the British monarchy aren't just being caused by Megan and Harry's interview. The turret at Nebworth House is also cracking. But who's to blame? Let me guess. Yes, a new report says the new cracks in the 15th century home, which was used as a location in the Crown and in the King's speech, are thought to be associated with climate change. Of course, Nebworth House was once owned by Sir Edward Bullier Lytton, famous for coining not only the phrase, the pen is mightier than the sword, but also the phrase, it was a dark and stormy night. It was a dark and stormy night is a phrase that should put the fear of God into Matt Keane and all those solar panel enthusiasts, as well as being the perfect opening sentence that has tormented so many novel writers ever since. So Margaret's a big star, that's life. This is life, too. That goes on, this goes on. Hmm. The night was hot. Wait, no. The night... The night was... humid. The night was humid. No, wait. The... hot. Hot! The night was hot. The night was hot and wet. Hot, wet and hot. The night was wet and hot. Hot and wet. Wet and hot. That's humid. The night was humid. Maybe the night isn't humid. See, maybe, maybe the night isn't humid. Maybe the night, maybe it was humid in the morning and at night it was cold. That gives you fog. Ah, the night was foggy. The night, 